Welcome to the third module of the Adkio course. This time, we are going to take a deep look at the Adkio cloud platform in the cloud. As you already know, this platform allows us to fully exploit the data collected by Adkio in our facilities, and use it to make comparative graphs, trend graphs, summary graphs of any kind. In addition to this, we can also make tables with these collected data, both historical data and real-time data. They are also interactive tables that allow us to interact with the facility from there. In addition, we are also going to see how to create SCADA type graphics, which will allow us to upload a plan, or many, of our facilities, and place controls on them to interact with that facility. In addition to interacting, we can of course, see states, see temperatures, see lights, see any variable collected from our facility. And finally, we will see how to assemble pages. The pages will allow us to order these tables, these SCADAs to place them in a menu for our final client. We will then start with a web interface, let's go there. We will start by seeing how to access Adkio Cloud. For this, we will go to the Adkio website, adkio.com, and click on the menu option Cloud, click on Customer Access, enter with the username, and password that we will have provided at the time of purchase of an Adkio device and enter a co-completely facility empty of Adkio Cloud. We are going to see its parts. On the one hand, we see that, we have activated a gear icon, this means that, we are in configuration mode, we enter this configuration mode, because from here, what it allows us to do is create new graphics, new tables of data, new pages and so on. With these elements, afterwards we will create a menu that, when deactivating the configuration, a menu organized according to our criteria will appear on this left side. Right now absolutely nothing appears, because obviously we have not generated any menu, we will see it little by little. We have basic information about us, as a client, and we have a list of all the facilities, this can be a client of ours, if we are installers or distributors of Adkio, I go to put it on full screen, and here have all the facilities of that client that are collecting data with Adkio, or if we are our end customer. Here we will have our name, and here, we will have all our delegations, in the case of having more than one. Very good, well, first of all, we are going to see the rest of the elements that, we have in the menu, but you are going to see that, in some cases, we have some icons that, we will not see, because they are icons that are not available in the Adkio Cloud version, rather they are in his older brother called Equus, but that, we will not see in this case. So, for example, the calendar icon, which we see here, we will not see it, because it is not available in the Adkio cloud. We see that, we also have an icon for alerts or alarms, they will also arrive by email, in real time, to the appropriate people according to what we have configured, but in addition to that, they are also listed here for a later consultation. Next, we have the date and time, this is especially important, if our client is in a different time zone than ours, so that, we know that all the graphics that, we see in the Adkio cloud interface refer to this time zone. And finally, we have the user section, where we have a profile and log out. As you can see, I have one more option, because I am a super administrator, this option will not appear to you. We are going to see then, the options that, we have for managing clients, we give the dots, and we give the option to edit client, and we see that we can set a name. A pseudonym that would be a short name by which we know this client, which is very typical for the client to have a long business name, but we connect it by a colloquial name. Well, we can indicate here a description. And in what time zone it is. Okay, we have all the time zones in the world. Logo, we can indicate a logo, it is already indicated, in this case, we have the Adkio Cloud logo. And, we would not have anything GLs like customer data, right? We are going to tell you to update customer, we are going to almost better to put something to tell us, what a customer is for this training, perfect much better. Then, we mentioned before we see that, we have the list of facilities for this customer. In this case, we have a unique test facility that is this and edit the facility will see that, we have a lot of values that can set for this facility. Facility name, same as before. A short name. Labels for this facility, because for example, we can indicate that, this facility has climate, that it has electricity, that it has control, and that it has, for example, blinds.
Very well, this will help us later to filter facilities that have climate, and facilities that have electricity, etc. Managed all of them, of course by Adkio. Location, this is especially important, if we are working with a company that has multinational branches in different time zones, indicate in each facility the time zone to which it belongs. According to if we are, for example, with our headquarters, as in our case, in Spain in La Coruña, and our delegations are in Latin America. We know that, we are going to have five, six, seven hours of time difference, therefore, if we make comparisons of graphs, we will let's see that, they cannot be directly compared, because obviously, when we are working here, in the e early morning hours, they are sleeping there. Okay, important, the currency, because we have euros the same, but we have all the currencies also available. The occupancy calendars. Let's see, how they work at Kyo Cloud allows us to define based on a variable, if our premises, this facility, we are talking about is occupied, or not, this which then allows us to draw graphs according to occupancy. For example, take graphics when the room is busy, and take graphics when the room is empty. Agree is important, because if we want, for example, to obtain data on climate, or climate consumption, it does not make any sense that, we mix occupancy with when the place is not occupied, because the average of those values would not make any sense, if the machines are turned off, so in this way, we can differentiate, and graph separately the data when the premises are busy, and when they are unoccupied. Here you are indicating that, you are not asking us, what is the variable that tells us, if that facility is occupied or not, logically this variable will come from Adkio here, and it will have been generated through a calendar, or it will have been generated through programming etc according to when local is busy, and when not. And now, we have more data from that facility, because if it belongs to a chain. What chain? What cooling capacity we have installed? What electrical power? Dot. What machines do we have for climate control, lighting control, if it is Dali if it is Kasambi, etc. The date on which this facility was created. And the type. The type is also something that, we can put freely. Maintenance emails. This is where, we must configure the emails of the people responsible for each of these areas. The main maintenance email that could be for example, maintenance at company underscore name dot com, whether if we have a climate manager. We will indicate here, lighting, electricity. Okay, we will not see this anomaly configuration, because it will not be available in the Adkio cloud. Very good, because with this, we would have seen the options of a facility, now that we are out, we are going to look at this box here, where we will see the number of our Adkio, a unique identifier they have, and if we click on them, we will see what takes us directly to that Adkio. Okay. You will remember from the first part of this course, that this is the Adkio interface, that is from the cloud, we have just entered our Adkio, here we have all its devices, its modules, variables, etc. Very well, we are going to get out of here then, you see that a new tab opens, and we return to where we were. Very good, because now that, we are inside a facility, we are going to start seeing the menu options on the left side. The first one, we have it is the device option. In this case, we still do not have any device, because it is a new facility, and we have not yet imported them from the Adkio of this facility. To do this, we will go here, import from Adkio, and we will see what it shows us inside of this Adkio, all the devices that we have. In this case, we are going to select them all, we see that, when we click on a device it displays all its variables, in this way, we could select, if we wish, only some variables of that device. In this case, we are going to mark them all. The statistics you will remember that, when we saw the interface of Adkio are the statistics of the device itself, the load of the CPU, the temperature, the disk spaces, the occupation of RAM memory, etc. Very simple, we won't have them all. VAS is a virtual device that, we create to save variables, because in this case, we are going to bring it to ourselves as well because it is possible that those variables would also want to use them in the statistics, so we are going to bring them. And now, tester 1, tester 2, tester 3 and tester 4, are devices that, we have connected to the ports by Modbus, and that, we generate random numbers. Then, they also serve us to work with them, we are going to tell them that all, that all, equally all, and the last all. 
And finally, we have a device that includes 18 relays and that will also be used to do writing tests on external devices through buses, so we have 18 states that tell us, if it is activated, or deactivated with a 1.0, and we also have the possibility. Well, of course the states, we will see later that, they are both read and write, if we read them, it tells us how they are, and if we write them, we can change them, and we also have other change registers. In this case, this device with this register of change every time, we write a 1 here in the change variable what it does is invert the state it currently has, that is, it would vary from 0 to 1 that is, on, off, on, off. Ok, we also have the possibility to play with 1 LED, all ADQ expansion devices have an online LED, and through this register, we can turn that LED on and off, for example to carry out communication tests. Ok, very well because we are going to tell him that, we want to save the changes, he asks us if we are sure of course, we say yes, and right now, we are bringing all the devices of that at Geo. We already have them, with this we have just managed to have in the cloud imported, and synchronized in real time, from this precise moment all the devices of this facility. Ok, let's see that, we can enter, for example, we are going to enter statistics, and we will see that, we do not have updated data when we would expect so, right? This happens, because the first time when we import the variables, we have to inform our Adgeo that, we want it to start supplying them to start uploading them from this moment on, so for this, we will go to the facility, we will go to these three points, and we will give you to update configuration in Adgeo, except. Very well, you warned us that you have done it. So from here, if we go to devices, and go back into statistics, we will see that now we already have all the data in real time, the disk occupation, the CPU occupation, the temperatures, etc. We simply click on these points of any variable. And we can see an instant graph of it. Perfect. In the upper left part. If we wish we can vary the range of this graph. And select between which days and hours we wish to visualize it. OK. Great, very good, because then, we already have an Adkeo connected to our facility, and you uploading all kinds of data in real time obviously in addition to uploading them in real time, and being able to see them directly, it is already being stored to be able to start studying them from now in the next few months years etc. In variables like these variables, we see right now that, they are in English, that they are as they come from Adkeo, as they were defined, but if we want to change the name, because as they are going to appear in the coordinate axes of our graphs. We can give it to edit variable, and we will see that, it does not allow us to change any field, because obviously, they come from Adkeo, and that is where they are defined, but we can change the name of this variable, which is the one that will appear as I said in the coordinate axes of the graphs, and the tables then instead of this we are going to put CPU use, according to this is important that, we know that we can give the variables more visual and more understandable names when we see them in the graphs. It has very well told us that, it has changed it, and if we go back to this device like now, and its CPU usage will be at the bottom, because it is arranged in alphabetical order, and here we have CPU usage. Finally, we are going to see a graph of the CPU use, we are going to do the same as before. Quickly, we are going to tell you that, we want from 1815 to 1831 today. Well here, we have the use of the CPU, and how we see it is between 15 and 19%. Ok, very well, then we are going to move on to the next menu item, which would be the tunnels, as you already know, all the Adkeo models allow us to generate tunnels that will allow us to reach any of the devices or other PLCs from our office brands, that we have mounted on the electrical panel, where Adkeo is installed. Obviously, as long as Adkeo has Ethernet connectivity with them we are going to understand how it works. The first thing, we should know is that Adkeo allows you to generate up to five different tunnels against devices of our facility, in this case, by default, it already has two tunnels created, and we are going to see what the criteria are for using these tunnels. First, each of the tunnels will work on a different port, and these ports are based on the number of the Adkeo device, which in this case would be 931,666 removing 9 and 3, and adding a counter from 0 to 4. That is, the next number would be available would be the 16,662. Okay, then we are going to give it here a new tunnel. 
we would have the 16,662, 16,663 and the 16,664 free as we start at zero. We have available from zero to four. Very well, remote host, this is the IP address of the PLC to which, we want to access from our local office the IP address that it has in the electrical according to we will. Panel put it for example 172.20.20.4. And finally, we must indicate the port of that device through which, we are going to access, normally, the brand of the automaton, it will already indicate which port is the configuration port for your device, we are going to put 441, for example to put something. OK is an example, I am not relying on anything in particular. Very well, with this we would already have this tunnel working. The moment we create a ton L, it will create it over it in real time, and we will have our office access the port. Let's create it, we have it here. Very good, well. With this, we are going to leave this first chapter of Adkio Cloud, because in the following chapters, we are going to talk about graphs, data tables, SCADAs and pages, okay? Very good, see you in chapter 2 of the Adkio Cloud web interface.